Greetings folks and welcome to another episode of B Playing Space Engineers. Um, you'll have to excuse me, um, I've had to edit this video quite a bit um, due to some sound issues I was having, um, like really bad sound issues as well. Uh, so this narration is happening after the fact. Uh, I did have a whole narration done um, whilst I was recording, as usual. Um, yeah, no, that uh, that went horribly wrong for me for some reason. I managed to fix the issue, yay. Um, but yeah, so what you're seeing here is me doing a build on a small ship. Um, now, I've had some comments or a comment regarding <coughs> small ships and their ability to sustain a player. Uh, as in, you know, can a small ship sustain a player? Uh, can a small ship provide everything a player needs um, in the way of assemblers and all of that stuff? And no, the small ship on its own cannot provide a player with absolutely everything they need to at least do constructions and stuff like that it will provide you with everything you need to survive though that's kind of the important thing um but it also a clever player i'm not saying i'm particularly clever just experienced but either a clever or an experienced player can literally build themselves up from nothing with just the survival kit uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Anytime we have to do any sort of large construction or anything, um, we'll simply build ourselves a production facility, small production facility, you know, and then we can take it apart again. <laughs> Once we're finished with whatever modifications we want to do. Um, again, that's not a hard thing to do. You just, you know, build yourself a small station platform. Um, Get yourself a refinery, a couple of solar panels. You don't even need, uh, you don't necessarily even need cargo storage. Yeah, seriously. Because <laughs> as long as you've got cargo storage on your ship, then, you know, you're, you're not going to run out of component space or anything. Um, it's, I'm, I, I, I will agree, it is far, far more difficult um, making a small ship and, and using exclusively a small ship will make things incredibly difficult for me. Um, but at the same time, uh, experience tells me, yeah, it's, it's, it's not so difficult that it can't be done. Um, and that's kind of, I, I think that's kind of part of the point that I think I'm going to prove with this, uh, with this series. Uh, you don't need a big ship. Uh, big ships are convenient, um, but they're not the be-all and end-all. And you can do quite well with just a small ship, and you can get a heck of a lot done. Well, you can get everything done with a small ship. It's just you have to, you have to, you know, you have to really think about what you're doing and work around it. Um, and anyway, I, I do enjoy a challenge, and quite honestly, I'd. When they say space is hard mode, doesn't feel that hard when I'm doing it, I'm going to be honest. Um, it's not like I'm constantly challenged with just crazy stuff. Uh, and a small ship is f basically far easier to uh, maintain it anyway, long term. Um, it's also harder to spot. At any distance, which may, means that uh, generally, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have an easier time of it. Uh, at least, at least where other players are concerned, they're they're not going to see you coming, which means or, or going, which or, or at least you're going to be harder to see because you're a smaller target. Um, you're much more likely to slip away unnoticed, which is kind of what we want. Um, we're we're not into confrontation. We're not we're not doing confrontations with anybody. Um, and the fact is. Uh, even if it is a keen server that I'm currently playing on, everyone actually seems really nice and friendly. I'm going to be honest, there's 
Um, you know, you have some regular players on there and then you have some, you know, just sort of irregulars. Uh, <laughs> on the whole, you know, I've only spoken to people, you know, via the global chat system and everything, but everyone seems really friendly, um, willing to offer help, willing to offer advice, um, you know, so I can't see there being a problem. Um, so yeah, what we're doing here is we're we're going to be pitting engines and gyros and solar panels. I think we're fin are we finishing solar panels? I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're going to be putting all of that stuff, all all of that good stuff, on this ship. You know, just because. <laughs> so we're just finishing off our connector so we ended up having to increase our cargo capacity because one medium cargo container not enough for like all of the components we ended up with um this dramatically increased the weight of the ship uh it was very slow it really was uh its acceleration was around about fully loaded it this small ship was accelerating at around about mm, i'd say around about a meter a second yeah so it took around about 100 seconds for it to get up to top speed ish don't quote me on that i'm you know you'll see later in a later episode or maybe not actually because i've already emptied my cargo hold um obviously i'm narrating this after the fact so i know in advance what i've done um but yeah, it, it really was very slow. It's now I've got the cargo hold emptied and, and like we've got a small um we've got a small I'd call it a workshop. Um and it's labelled on my GPS as workshop as well. Um that's pretty much our it's it's a temporary uh or semi permanent um facility that we can use to refit our ship when we need to. Um You'll see that in a later episode, though. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna give you any spoilers about it. It's it's a very simple thing to do, though, um, and it's very easy to make more of it if you need to, you know, and increase its capabilities and all of that. Because obviously, that's where um, like our basic assembler and basic refinery and stuff like that are. Now, I'm just emptying out the cargo of my ship and getting the ice on board the new ship because obviously. Resources wise, this thing uses far less in the way of resources, um, both to build but also to maintain. So you need less ice. Um, that's it, literally, because we're not using anything else. Uh, our only power sources are our hydrogen engine, solar powers, and a battery. And quite honestly, I not even sure we need the solar i'm not even sure we need the hydrogen engine in the first place i'm like i'm, I'm questioning the need for it because solar and batteries would work just as well anyway so you know it's, it's potentially just a spare part that we can use later on to make more stuff if we need to now as you can see we've got tons of spare buses on this sh and by buses, I mean like places where we can run connectors through or, or connect other things up. So we've got a lot of those on this ship so that, you know, doing a hydrogen conversion or a partial hydrogen engine or, or a partial, sorry, uh, hydrogen thruster conversion. We will have to build a hydrogen tank for that, though. Um, but yeah, possibly a, a hydrogen conversion on this ship shouldn't be too hard. Um, it's, it's definitely got it's kind of like an abrams tank in that you know it's we fruit we future proofed it a bit uh anyone who knows anything about the abrams tank they they left huge voids and spaces inside that thing um so that you know effectively they could just upgrade the thing when they needed to rather than like build an entire new line of tanks which actually pretty clever idea um you know americans yeah they come up with good ideas occasionally, you know. <laughs> and when they do, pat on the head. Good, good job. Give that man a biscuit. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded really patronising, and I didn't mean it to. Um, 
anyway, by the looks of things, we're just moving our material resources over. So these are ingots like silicon, nickel, and all the rest of it. Over to our ship, because, you know, we don't want to leave that stuff behind. Yep, and there's me figuring out that the uh, button to transfer all is faster than doing it one bit at a time. Huh. <coughs> so we carry on stripping out the ship, um, or, or emptying out the ship of parts. Once we've got it fully emptied, we'll, uh, we'll start the strip process. Now, there is a part of this... Uh, this video will cover the entire build of the ship, the entire internal build of the ship. It's not going to cover the armor plate section because in all honesty no one wants to see that i mean the end result yeah but how you got there that's going to be yeah less important and quite honestly we're all smart enough to figure out how the armor plating was done um just by looking at it and saying oh yeah look he used quarter blocks and half blocks and two third blocks and full blocks and y y you know what i mean it's like it's it's super obvious and and you shouldn't have to be walked through it by me you guys should have more than enough an, uh, of an idea of how to plate a ship so that it's in and aren't exposed it's pretty freaking simple um we do end up filling our cargo hold completely though uh <laughs> like there isn't room for anything in there but yeah, we do the important things of taking apart the basic refinery um, and the basic assembler. You might have noticed as well that neither of those components need tubes at all to build. Yeah, this is this is how, you know, you use the survival kit to build yourself. If, if you need large steel tubes or small steel tubes or grates or something like that, um, you know, you just build yourself a small, uh, a small production facility, like I said, which is just a, a very small station platform with like uh, a few solar panels. Again, easy to do via the survival kit, and then a basic assembler and a basic refinery, and you're good to go. And if necessary, you know, if if, if you're doing really advanced parts, um, you know, you build yourself a advanced refinery and. So, or sorry a standard refinery and you know the standard assembler now so we've taken an engine apart there and that's given us basically all of the components we need already just from that uh, to get our thrusters going and there's me trying to sort of convert stuff over and it's like no it's just not going to work dude you don't have any room <laughs> and i'm not sure what i'm talking about there or looking at but hey um like i said there was there was an error okay so we're getting the gyros on now that looks like what we've decided to do and we put two gyros on this thing We do think about putting more on, but it literally only needs two anyway. Two's more than enough for this thing. Gives it plenty of spin, flip, and mobility. Because it's a small ship, it doesn't weigh a huge amount. And small gyros are more than enough to do it. So we get those done. And obviously we've got all the parts that we need. Although it does take us a little while to find all the parts that we need. So yeah, it's motors, computers, steel plates. Um, don't worry, I do figure this all out. And we get it built. In fact, I think I might skip us ahead. Just, well, no, actually, I'll just let it play through and you can watch watch, watch what happens. Um, nothing actually happens. The build just goes exactly as I anticipated it. We don't screw it up. We don't end up knocking something and sending something flying off into space like space billiards or something um oh god i said billiards that's a horrible word so we get the motors in 
obviously and then once the gyros are on i think we start building the thrusters i'm pretty sure we start doing thrusters because it's gyros then thrusters you can do thrusters then gyros but yeah We once tried to do a ship that was uh, that had no thr no gyros on it and was simply thruster controlled. That was really hard work, and we never actually got it working properly. But we we think it's a thing that can be done. Um, but obviously, you're 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 constantly sort of trying to counteract your previous thrust action. Not all the time, but you know, quite a lot. <laughs> and it's very hard to get it down to exactly zero meters a second. So yeah, it is it is possible to do it, but I don't recommend it. Because obviously attitude control is an issue. Um, and it gets very complicated very very complicated because you have to have thrusters in certain locations working counter to each other um, to make the ship flip and stuff like that and yeah it just becomes an overly complicated nightmare um it so don't do it <laughs> seriously just put a gyro on it will just make things so much easier so we're getting the forward thrusters on we go with four th forward thrusters and six rear because, you know, that kind of makes sense in a kind of, you don't use forward thrust, you're only using your forward thrust to, uh, uh, to um, reduce your forward momentum. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, you, you're just going forward anyway, so you might as well just have more more on the way of rear thrusters than on forward thrusters um so we noticed our power was getting a bit low and we jump into our seat which is now all of this is working now so we're able to i think we had that all working last episode actually so we we're able to quickly uh we're able to quickly refill everything that we need so our hydrogen our oxygen power just by jumping into a seat it's very convenient don't even have to hold F <laughs> it just happens automatically that's how convenient it is so we're getting the side thrusters on these are the left facing thrusters and then we get the right right facing we get four left right facing thrusters on there and then we get four right right facing thrusters on there then we hand after we've got these on we'll uh, we had all the up and down thrust which is really really easy and yeah i get spooked by an ast by the sun moving behind an asteroid uh <laughs> for a moment i thought oh crap there's there's a very big ship and it's like no no it's it's not don't worry don't panic you've got no reason to be crapping yourself and quite honestly after speaking to the guys on the server as well not really any reason to be worried because like everyone like i said it's actually really friendly and open play um or at least majority of people are um even keen provides a notice on open play and says you know work with others be friendly yada 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 so that's the you know they they encourage civilized behavior which i totally understand as well um Because there's nothing worse than, you know, spending potentially weeks or months and then building something, uh, you know, and then having some, some uh, thrill-seeking individual uh, ruin it all, you know, ruin all your, ruin your time spent um, for their own entertainment. Ah. Uh, we all have words for that type of person. 
and the fact is the only reason why they do it as well is because the only reason why people behave like that is because you know they're like it's a game it doesn't matter you know and it's like well actually technically that person spent a heck of a lot of time uh doing that so it kind of does matter probably a lot to that person um so so don't do that so we get our thrusters going um I'm going to stop moralizing on on how you should play. You should play however the heck you want, but just you know, if you're playing open play on the keen servers, then yeah, just they set some rules and just please follow those because you know everyone's everyone else is playing by that rule book. So if you could do the same, that would be great. Um, not that I've actually seen any problems at all like that. I mean, there are plenty of other servers that are combat orientated if that's the thing that you like to do there there are there are a whole plethora of combat servers um that you can join and and you know you can enjoy uh you can enjoy the building something and spending days to build something and then lose it in a five minute firefight why do you do that <laughs> um, yeah, so there are plenty of servers where you can do that. So if, if that's your thing, go knock yourself out, go enjoy yourself. You know, I mean, some people might enjoy that. I'm kind of like, eh. <clears throat> now, I will say from the start, this ship is completely unarmed. It has zero weapons. I have no intention of putting any weapons on it either. Uh, simply because... You know, it's it's a small survival ship, survival exploration ship. Um, we're hopefully going to try and land it on a moon. May have to stick some hydrogen. Th we're going to have to stick hydrogen thrusters on the thing. At least one hydrogen thruster. Um, and that's totally fine. Um, So we're grabbing ourselves some large steel tubes just to finish off our thrusters and obviously uh, construction components because those are the parts that we kind of need to finish these parts off. So we get our down thrusters completed. This is a really quick, really easy build as well. Um, and I, I suspect that many of you have built something fairly similar to this. Uh, you know, for a small ship. I, I, I can guarantee that quite a few of the, you will look at this and go, I have built something very, very similar to that. There is a reason for that. Um, there's a... There's some sort of theory. Uh, it, well, it, it it basically applies to both science and nature that a good idea has a habit of being repeated um, simply because it's a very very good idea. <laughs> so certain designs reappear throughout not only nature but science as well multiple times. In that you know it's like uh, you know how like the hedgehog evolve you know the hedgehog that we all know and love in our back gardens um you know that particular species of creature you know evolved in northern europe and yet you can find something very similar down in madagascar simply because nature copied a good idea and it's the same with space engineers you know you there might be a slightly different a slight difference in the thrust layout but many of you will look at the ship and go seen that before <laughs> and you'd be right because you know um i heck i've built ships very similar to this before myself and it's simply because it's a very easy yet reliable design that's just all there is to it uh Which is why sometimes claims of plagiarism and stuff like that, I'm sometimes a little bit kind of diddy though. Uh, you 
you know, because it's not necessarily the case that someone's copied something deliberately from someone else. It's just someone's had the same idea afterwards and is completely un unaware that, like, you know, that idea was there in the first place. Um, <laughs> which, again, is something that can happen. Um, You know, should that should that be addressed? I in, in real life, um, how? <laughs> um, anyway, it's, it's it's just a thing, you know. Uh, so as you can see in the chat bar, uh, someone sharing sharing the deep G, G, DPS for an ice lake. I suspect because it's a lake, it's down on one of the planets. Um, so yeah, there are people here. Um, obviously, it's a keen open play server, so of course there are going to be people here. Um, also, about the keen open play servers, they've increased the number of UK servers to three now, which means um, it's a heck of a lot easier to get onto the keen open play. If, if you're a UK player, it's a heck of a lot easier to get onto a keen open play server that has uh, that has a very good ping. So yeah, um, if you feel like trying open play, I encourage you to do so. Just please obey Keen's rules, or at least follow the the advice they give. I, they they don't really give it as a rule; they just give it as advice. Uh, but everyone tends to follow the advice, so please follow the advice and have fun. Um, get creative with your fellow space engineers, uh, and don't shoot them in the head. <laughs> I mean, you can, but like, I, I don't, it's up to you how you play the game, but, you know, everyone's sort of playing together and it's kind of fun. Or, well, you know, not playing together, you know, there are, there are plenty of people, you know, in small groups or plenty of people like me who are, who are playing solo, but, you know, they don't have any intention of doing anything nefarious to anyone ever, <laughs> you know, or anytime soon, um, simply because we've got no reason to. And there is more than enough on this server already to shoot at, you know, uh, as you saw when I tried to land on uh, land on that moon or planet or whatever the hell it was. And I, I plowed into it face first. Um, yeah, it's a two minute. It's, it's like a two or three minute video. So go watch it if you haven't seen it. It's, it's quite amusing. Um, yeah, so there are space pirates here and... Obviously, that means you've kind of got to be situationally aware of things like that. Um, as if I see anything like that coming at me, I will literally just plot like, plot a course away from it at at the at best speed because I'm just you know not interested in combat realistically. I just view it as a waste of resources. I really do. It's a waste of time and resources, and quite honestly, once you're up in space, why the heck are you fighting each other? You, you know, you're supposed to be beyond acting like a freaking barbarian. Um, <laughs> you know, it's all well and good, humanity being murderous and killing each other for resources and stuff when, you know, you're a desperately low-end technological level and resources are scanned and what there is everyone's having to fight each other for but once humanity gets up into space there shouldn't be any reason for us to behave like that yeah i'm going into a philosophical thing here um, because obviously there is tons of resources available to you once you are up into uh well, once you are up in space and i'm talking real life here like you wouldn't believe how how ridiculous it is for things like Independence Day or the Battle of Los Angeles, uh, you know, those types of films. They're completely stupid beyond any reasonable measure. Um, how far are we? Yeah, we've got a, we've got a couple more minutes. Yeah, they're, they're completely ridiculous uh, simply because, you, you know, I mean, the Battle of Los Angeles, they steal our seawater 
Okay, you you do understand that salt's really easy to produce and water is far more abundant in space than it is on Earth. I, yeah, I'm not kidding. Um, hydrogen, oxygen, all of those things, you, you can find them in frozen, you can find them in a frozen form way easier and you can find oceans of the stuff just floating around in that frozen solid form in space. Uh, you know, what salt? Oh, it's a couple of chemicals. Well, base components for those chemicals aren't hard to find in space either. I'm sorry, there's no reason to go landing on a planet and invading it. It's stupid and dumb. <laughs> it really is. Um, so yeah, don't expect anything like that to ever happen because there's just no reason to. Um, the fact is, if there are, there are aliens and, and they're, they're watching any of our broad TV broadcasts and they're seeing that kind of thing, they're probably laughing their backsides off um, because of just how ridiculous that idea is. Anyway, um, enough with that. So we're getting close to the sort of end of the video and I think we're going to, yeah, we've gotten the build done and now we're getting as much steel plate as we can fit into our inventory to start slapping, uh, start slapping some armor on it, which we start doing, you know, there we go. We start at the back, just standard light armor blocks. Uh, we start applying them and yeah. You, you, you'll see the finished construction of the ship, but I'm not, I'm not going to walk you through the entire armoring process. Like I said, you, you guys are smart enough to know how to do this, and it would be kind of patronising for me to walk you through it, so I'm not going to. I'm not even sure why I'm still recording right now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I guess we're coming to the end of the video now. We've got... Yeah, we've got a couple of minutes left, um, or a couple of seconds left. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stop it here, stop the recording here anyway. Um, so yeah, have fun, play safe, and I will catch you guys next time for some more Space Engineers.